Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forge and the tool of the day. Today we're going to be discussing rounding hammers. Rounding hammers are sort of similar to a ball peen hammer but it's just a gently domed face and not that round ball that leaves so many hammer marks like a ball peen does. A rounding hammer is frequently the choice for a farrier and it's easy to find a variety of rounding hammers at somebody that specializes in farrier tools. They're really a relatively new thing on the blacksmithing scene. Blacksmiths have probably used them for quite some time, but they weren't as popular as they seem to be becoming now. And they are a good hammer. They can be very useful. As with any other hammer, rounding hammers come in a variety of sizes. These are fairly typical of what you get from a farrier supply store. I don't know if you can see it in the video. This one's kind of got a bevel here with a round surface. It's just the way it comes from the, the farrier suppliers. These are the fairly cheap variety. Still have casting marks. There are some extremely nice ones available if you want to spend the extra money. This is the same hammer, a little bit bigger, but it's been ground around that and get rid of the facet and make it more of a round transition from the side of the face up to the top and it's less likely to leave a mark from that, that bevel. So it is worth dressing these hammers when you get them. They're probably going to need some sort of work. Almost any hammer you buy, no matter what shape, is going to need some dressing, unless it's made custom by a blacksmith who takes the time to dress it for you. This one is another shop-modified hammer. This is just a typical hand sledge, very similar to the the one I made the diagonal peen out of, all this one's tapered. I think these might be called drilling hammers originally. Used for driving star point drills in concrete or stone. But it comes with two flat faces. It was just a matter of grinding around on the other face. And this gives me a nice heavy rounding hammer that is useful if I'm trying to shape something rather large. That helps. But my new favorite rounding hammer is the one Stuart Shirley made for me. I've had this for well, maybe a couple of years now. I don't remember exactly when he made this. But this is a custom-made, one-of-a-kind hammer. And if you're making your own, you might make something similar to this, or if you're buying one from another smith. But these are what are becoming popular. I don't know who popularized them. It may have been Brian Brazil that made these popular among smiths. Certainly Alex Steele has probably popularized them to some extent. And they're nice general-purpose hammers. Flat face on one side, if you need to get into places where you just can't leave any kind of hammer mark, the round surface helps. I find this particularly useful on something like an axe or an adze blade that I need to spread evenly. I'll often start with a cross peen or diagonal peen to spread it aggressively this way, but to smooth it out, that, that round really helps. It gets up in here and doesn't leave a sharp transition, it's a more gentle transition, and that's a good place to use them for big spreading operations that need to spread in both directions. So it's just like a ball peen in that regard that it spreads 360 degrees instead of just 180 degrees. I really don't have a lot to say about the rounding hammers. I don't use one often. Probably less than 10% of what I do in the shop is done with a rounding hammer. Again, I think a two to two and a half, maybe three pound cross peen is the most useful hammer in the shop. But a lot of people like a rounding hammer for their primary hammer. If you do, great, that's what you should use. It's a lot of personal preference, and a lot of personal preference is based on what the person you learned from liked, more so than what you like. You just adapt what they use, and that's what you get used to, so therefore it becomes your preference. So if a rounding hammer is your preference, you should own an assortment of rounding hammers. Again, something from the one and a half to two pound range up to something about three. This one's, I think, actually three and a half. It's a heavy hammer. It's not one I swing all day, but boy, when I want to use it, I really am glad that I've got this heavier hammer that doesn't leave any kind of edge marks on things with slightly curvy surfaces. But for heavy drawing out and heavy forge work, you're still mostly using the flat face regardless of what the back looks like. This isn't properly called a peen on these hammers. The rounding hammer is just a round face and a flat face, so there's not a peen like a ball peen hammer. Do you need them? 
Well, I think, I think I've sort of said that I don't think you need a rounding hammer in your shop, but they can come in handy. So again, if you can acquire them, you might as well. Hammers tend to collect in a blacksmith shop. I don't know how many hammers I have in here, probably 40 or 50 different hammers in different weights and different configurations. And all of them are useful at some point. 90% of what I do at the anvil is done with just one or two hammers, and the other 10% uses all those other hammers. So it's not necessary to have all of these styles of hammers in your shop if you're just starting out. Start out with that basic, good, universal cross peen hammer, and then collect other hammers as you can. If after two or three years you've never used that hammer, maybe you can pass it on to somebody else who's looking for a, a hammer of that sort. But if you use it once every six months or so, it's probably worth keeping around, especially if you're not going broke buying hammers. Custom hammers made by other blacksmiths cost a lot more than the commercially made hammers, but they, they have more class, they have more style, they're frequently better balanced, better designed, because these blacksmiths know what you need in a hammer better than Sears knows what you need in a hammer. So it's... It's neat to buy custom hammers from other blacksmiths. I like that William Bastis cross peen. I like the Stuart Shirley rounding hammer. I've got a little Brent Bailey cross peen hammer. It's really neat to own tools made by other smiths, but they're going to cost you a lot more. So if you're looking for hammers and all you can afford is the common over-the-counter hammers that still have casting marks in them, they are perfectly suitable. Just spend a little time dressing the faces to make sure there's no rough spots and no sharp edges to ding your work. You'll be fine. As always, I hope that was useful. Hope you can give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. I hope you can get out to your shop. I hope you can make something. But do stay safe. Do wear your safety glasses. And we will see you for the next one.